Hi. We talked about the seven characteristics shown here on the left that all living things must satisfy in order to be considered alive. And we've also talked about in a prior video how these seven characteristics fit into five basic themes of life, namely organization, information, energy and matter, interactions, and evolution. So in today's video, I want to talk about the first characteristic of living things over on the left. That's that living organisms have order and are arranged in a hierarchy. And why I want to talk about this is because in my years of teaching college biology, I found that students often get confused by a topic found in this idea of hierarchy, and that specifically is something known as emergent properties. So I wanna break down what this characteristic of living things means, and then talk about what emergent properties are. So the theme of life is organization, and within this theme, we have this characteristic of life, that living organisms have order and they are arranged in a hierarchy. So we can break that down into the two parts. One, there's order within living organisms, and two, that life on Earth exists at several levels of organization. And we can use a hierarchy to essentially organize all those various levels of organization. So let's start out talking about the first topic. There's order within a living organism. Now, this is a basic cell. This is what's known as a eukaryotic cell because it has a nucleus. So cells that have nucleus are called eukaryotic cells, and cells without a nucleus to organize the DNA in the center are called prokaryotic cells. Now, there's order in eukaryotic or prokaryotic cells, and I'm just showing you here a eukaryotic cell because humans are eukaryotic, which means all of our cells have nuclei that the DNA is found inside. So often we focus on eukaryotic cells until you take a class like microbiology, and then they start focusing specifically on all those prokaryotes. So the cell is the basic unit of life. It's the smallest structure that can maintain life. And like we said, there are unicellular organisms and there are multicellular organisms like us that are composed of more than one cell. We, of course, are composed of trillions of cells. So the cell is the basic unit of life, but there's order. You can see it here if you look at this picture of a cell. Inside of the cell, there are things called organelles and there are various structures that form and these are all orderly. Now, what, or, what are organelles? Just like the human body has organs, and those are structures in our body that carry out certain tasks, within each cell, there are organelles or little organs that also carry out specific tasks. So for instance, ribosomes, those are the ones that uh, assemble proteins. They make proteins. And probably you know this, but what's the powerhouse of the cell? What in the cell actually converts things into energy that the cell can use? Right, mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. So we can see those here as well. So within the cell, there is structure. We have organelles, we have other structures made of proteins like the cytoskeleton. And then we can drill down further from this, right? We know that everything within the cell and the cell itself is going to be made of various molecules. And those molecules are made of atoms. Atoms are things like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Those are atoms. And they come together to form molecules. In fact, 96% of living things are made of those four atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, right? Those four elements. So there's order within a living organism. And I want to mention that multicellular organisms that are made of lots of cells have order that's higher up on the hierarchy than the cell. So we have unicellular organisms, which are just one cell. But when we have organisms like humans and animals and plants that start to have lots of cells, well, those cells can come together into tissues, right? And those tissues perform specific functions and provide different structures. And those tissues then can come together to form organs, right? And now that entire organ performs a certain task within that organism, okay? But remember, tissues and organs are only gonna be found in multicellular organisms. Don't forget that there are living things out there that are only one cell big, they're unicellular. 
Now, the second part of this this characteristic of living things is that life on Earth exists at several levels of organization. So how exactly do we order all of this life on Earth and all of the non-living things that we interact with? Well, we use what's called a hierarchy. And again, a hierarchy is simply an organization method. It allows you to drill down in the hierarchy to look at very specific levels, or you can sort of zoom out, see the whole picture and the most exclu- inclusive levels, right? That include everything that was in the levels below it. So you can kind of think of a hierarchy as different structural levels and each new level builds on the level below it. So these are the levels of the hierarchy of life. Um, We have the cell, which is the lowest level. And we know that cells can come together to form multicellular organisms. And I put a little asterisk there uh, because remember, there are unicellular organisms too. They don't necessarily come together to form a multicellular organism. Okay, so keep in mind that not all things that are alive are multicellular organisms. And then the next level is called the population. The level of that is called the community. The level above that is called the ecosystem. And then the level above that that includes all the levels below it is called the biosphere. So let's talk about what the definition of these various levels are, okay? So first we have the cell. The cell is the smallest unit of life. We talked about the cell. Now cells can come together in in many different organisms to form multicellular organisms. So multicellular organisms have two or more cells within them. And of course, like us, we have trillions of cells that all work together. And again, you can remember that cells within these multicellular organisms, cells can form tissues and those tissues can create organs. And then those organs all come together to form the entire multicellular organism. So in our case, it's a frog. This is our example. Now, a population is defined as a group of the same organism, okay, the same species, living together in the same area. So we see on the multicellular organism level, we were just looking at one single multicellular organism, one frog. But at the population level, well, now we've built upon the level below it, the population talks about a group of frogs, a group of the same species that are living together in the same space and in the same time. That's a definition of a population. This is important. Put a little note by this because when biologists talk about populations, they're not talking about just like any old group, right? They're talking about a group of the same species that are living together in the same area at the same time. Okay, that's a population. Here we have a population of frogs. Now, the next structural level of our hierarchy builds upon this. So when we have many populations living together in the same area, we call that a community. So here's a community that has frogs and it has bugs and it has fish and it has trees and it has geese. Right. So we have five different populations here of frogs, bugs, fish, trees and geese. These five different populations are all living in the same location. So we call that a community. So when the word community is used, it necessarily means we're talking about different populations that are living in the same area. Okay, now the next structural level that's gonna build upon community is called the ecosystem. And an ecosystem is all the communities that now interact with their physical environment. So now we can see uh, that those frogs and bugs and fish and trees and geese are now living around this lake. Okay, so the ecosystem level of the hierarchy pulls in all of the non-living things. So what non-living things do you see in this picture? Uh, Like water, right? Water is a really important part of this lake. And uh, it's part of the ecosystem, okay? It is not alive. So water is an important part of the ecosystem. Uh, We see the mountain and soil, uh, dirt and rocks. Those are non-living things. We see the air. That's a non-living thing, okay? So these are different things that are not alive that are now part of the ecosystem. 
So at the community level, we're only looking at the different populations of living things. But when we move up to the ecosystem level of the hierarchy, well, now we can, we're talking about those communities interacting with their physical environment. Now, finally, the highest level of the hierarchy of Earth is the biosphere. Okay, the biosphere is all regions of the crust, the water, uh, the air that sustain life. That's the biosphere. Now, I want to talk about this idea of emergent properties. Okay, when we move up the levels, as we move up from one structural level to the next higher one, these emergent properties appear. OK, these are features that you can't observe at the lower level, but you can observe them at the next higher level of the hierarchy. So emergent properties arise due to the relationship and the interactions between the components of the system at that particular level. OK, so I want to walk through some examples and see if you can tell me at what level of the hierarchy does that emergent property appear? Okay, so here I've moved our little reminder icons over to the side so we can keep in mind that the cell is the lowest level of the hierarchy. Then we can have multicellular organisms, then populations, right? Those are all the same species, a group of them living at the same location in the same area at the same time. Communities are now different populations interacting together. The ecosystem pulls in the non-living parts, right, with those communities, like the rocks and the water and the air and sunlight, for instance. And then the biosphere contains the, all the regions of the Earth that sustain life. Okay, so here is an example of an emergent property. Okay, birds flying in the shape of a V. Maybe you've seen birds flying like geese, for instance, or ducks. And when they're flying in the air and they're traveling, they'll form a V. Now, what level, what's the first level, starting at the bottom and moving up, what's the first level of the hierarchy that we can now observe birds flying in a V shape? I'm going to give you a second to think about this. But as we're working through these, uh, feel free to pause the video so you can think about it and come up with the answer before we discuss it on our own, okay? So what is the lowest level of the hierarchy that we now can observe this emergent property? And that's the interaction of birds now flying in a V shape. Okay, let's break it down. If we're looking at the cell, that level, that's the lowest level, can we see birds flying in a V shape? No. What if we look at the multicellular organism? Well, now we can see a bird, one bird, right? But we can't see what, what it's interacting with. If we go to the population level, now we can see a group of birds, right? The group of them, that's the population. And now that's the level where we can see this emergent property of birds flying in the shape of a V, okay? So the level that we can now observe birds flying in a V-shape is at the level of population. That's the, the lowest level that we can now observe that. So again, these emergent properties arise because of the relationship and the interactions between the components of that particular level. And so within a population, we know there are the group of the same species, group of birds, and now we can see the relationship between the birds and that they might be flying in a V-shape, okay? So why is it an emergent property? Well, because it emerges or appears when we move to the next higher level of the hierarchy, but we could not observe that at the lower, the level below that level. So at multicellular organism, we can't observe birds flying in a V-shape because we're looking at one multicellular organism, one bird. But if we move up to population, now we can see, well, it's a group of birds and we can see them interacting and flying in a V-shape. Okay, let's try another one. How about this? A lion eating a zebra. What's the lowest level of this hierarchy that we can observe this property, this emergent property? Okay, well, lion eating a zebra. We have two different species here, right? Two different types of organism. So at the population level, we're only looking at one group of species. So a group of lions or a group of zebras but we're not looking at the interactions between them at that population level. That happens at the next structural level, that's the community, 
Okay. So the definition of a community is that these are populations living together in the same area in the same time. And so at the community level, now we can see the lion eating the zebra, right? Chasing and attacking and taking down and eating a zebra. We can see now the interactions of the different populations at this level. So the lion eating a zebra would emerge at the community level. Let's try another one. Two cells exchanging proteins. Which level would we first be able to observe this, this property? Okay, well, we know if we're looking at one cell, we might see a cell maybe secrete something, right, outside of it, but we don't know what's happening to that. We're just observing that single cell. If we move up to the next level of the hierarchy, the multicellular organism, well, now we can see those cells dependent upon each other. And now we can see that one cell is secreting something now that is uh, being taken in or endocytosed by another cell, right? So two cells exchanging proteins, we see this property now at the multicellular organism level. Here's the next one. How about this? A monkey using a rock to break open a hard nut. At what level of the hierarchy would we see this? Okay, what do we have to think of here? Okay, well, in this statement, we're looking at a monkey, but now the monkey is actually using something that is part of the physical environment, a rock. So we're only going to be able to see the interaction of populations or communities with their non-living environments at the level of an ecosystem. So at the level of ecosystem, now we can observe the monkey using part of that physical environment and interacting with the physical environment. You know, other examples, other emergent properties that might appear at the ecosystem level might be something like uh, a sea anemone or a barnacle now sticking to a rock in the ocean, right? Um, that might be an example of we can now see these, these living things interacting with the physical environment like those rocks. Okay, here's the fifth example. And this is a trick question. I want you to try to figure out why is this a trick question? This is not an emergent property. Why is that? Okay, a group of trees living in the same area. Why is that not considered an emergent property? And the answer to that is this is actually the definition of one of the levels, okay? So this is where I find that sometimes people get a little confused. Know what the levels are and what the definitions of them are, but then you have to think of what are properties now that can appear because of that. So a group of trees living in the same area, well, that's the definition of a population. It's a group of the same species living in the same area. For an emergent property that you can now see in this group of trees, well, that means we now have to think of things where now we can observe the trees interacting with each other. So um, maybe an emergent property might be, okay, we have this group of trees, and now we can observe uh, fertilization and reproduction where this tree gives off pollen and this tree has flowers that the pollen sticks to and the pollen fertilizes the egg. OK, the sperm and the pollen fertilizes the eggs of those trees so that we can form seeds. Right. So reproduction would be something now that we can see in uh, a group of trees living in the same area. That would be an emergent property. But a group of trees living in the same area, that is the definition of the level. That's the population. And now the question is, once you have a population, what are things you can observe seeing that population that you couldn't observe when you were looking at one organism alone? Okay. Uh, other things might be, for instance, maybe these trees can exchange nutrients through the root system. That's an emergent property that we now can see at the population level. So keep in mind when you're trying to think of the emergent properties, don't just define the levels. Those are the definitions of the various levels, right? Multicellular organism, a population, a community as different populations interacting with each other. The emergent property is what are the things that now you can observe based upon the relationship and the interaction between the components at that level.
Okay, so here are some others I wanted to throw out there. We're not going to go through them together, but you can pause the video and go through them on your own, okay? Uh, these are emergent properties that appear at one of these levels of the hierarchy. So you can go through them and try to figure out at what level of the hierarchy do we first observe these emergent properties. So taken together, this property of living things, that living organisms have order and are arranged in a hierarchy, we actually could combine both parts of this into one thing, where we can start with atoms as the smallest uh, unit of the hierarchy that, that combine together to form molecules into organelles and structures that form a cell, and cells can form tissues, and those tissues can form organs, which form multicellular organisms. And then multicellular organisms can come together in groups known as populations. And then different populations interacting with each other is called a community. And then the communities and those populations interacting with the non-living parts of the environment, like uh, rocks and dirt and water and air, that's the ecosystem. And then all of the ecosystems found on Earth, right? All the regions of Earth that support life are known as the biosphere. Now, if you're learning this as part of a class, different textbooks, different professors like to specify different parts of the hierarchy, you know, so make sure that you understand uh, we can have one big hierarchy like this, or we can break it down into smaller hierarchies as well. And again, those levels where I put a little asterisk, that means that those are parts of multicellular organisms, but keep in mind that there's a lot of different organisms out there that are only one cell big. Those are unicellular organisms, and they're an important part of uh, our community and biosphere as well. I'll be releasing new videos every week, so be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that you get notification of these, and I do hope that they help you better understand these principles of biology.